Quite a lot of people seem to agree that sugar is nice. From cakes to a cuppa, just a spoonful of the sweet stuff can help make things that little bit better. It seems, however, that we humans aren't the only ones who enjoy sugar, because some steam locomotives have also gotten a taste for it too. Throughout the 17th and 18th centuries, sugar was a massive part of trade throughout the British, French, Dutch and many other European empires. With sugarcane mills appearing all over the Caribbean, the Americas, Africa and Asia. Most of these mills were powered by water, wind or mules, but the introduction of steam engines in the 19th century led to many switching over to steam power, allowing them to expand and further increase their output. Sugarcane, however, takes up a significant amount of land, and so when it came time to harvest, workers needed a better way of transporting the vast quantities of sugarcane to the mill. Come the railway revolution, most mills built narrow-gauge railways between the fields to help transport the sugarcane during harvest season, and naturally needed locomotives to help pull and shunt the trucks. Fueling the locomotives, however, was awkward. Most sugarcane railways didn't have easy access to coal, at least not cheap or high-quality coal, so wood was the preferred fuel for their locomotives. Wood, however, doesn't produce as much heat as coal, and as such, locomotives would have to burn more of it to keep a full head of steam, requiring them to restock on fuel more frequently. Another problem, too, was that some mills found the locals would help themselves to wood or coal from lineside fuel stocks, further making fueling engines a problem. Then, one day, some mill workers had an idea. After sugarcane is processed, it leaves behind a dry, pulpy fibre called bagasse. It can be processed into paper or refined into ethanol, but it's mostly burned as fuel. For years, mills used bagasse to fire the boilers that powered their machinery as it was essentially free fuel, and so naturally many mills decided to try using it to fuel their locomotives too. Coal-burning engines struggled to get enough heat from the bagasse, but wood-burning engines with wider fireboxes and larger grates could burn the stuff easily, proving to be an effective alternative to wood. Having essentially found a free source of fuel, many sugarcane mills switched over to firing their engines purely on bagasse alone. Some mills even ordering locomotives specifically designed to run on just bagasse. These engines tended to have bigger fireboxes, smaller boilers, spark arresters and very large tenders to carry the baled bagasse. Countless mills saved a significant amount of money this way, with the cost of buying bagasse burning engines quickly being made up for by how cheap they were to run. As amazing as this free fuel was, everything free still comes at a cost. Bagasse not only has a low calorific value, but also has quite a high moisture content, meaning it can be difficult to get it to start burning in the first place for little energy in return. Its low calorific value also means you need to burn much more of it in order to produce the same amount of energy as coal or wood. It's noted that many bagasse engines would need to burn through all the fuel in its tender in order to get up to steam from a cold start. As such, engines would need to restock on fuel frequently. Though given most mill lines were relatively short, it wasn't a major restriction, but more of an inconvenience. The tenders on these locomotives too were massive, often taller and longer than the locomotive itself, making shunting and restocking fuel much more awkward. On top of that, bagasse wouldn't fully burn in the firebox anyway, as its fine, fibrous nature combined with the draft of the firebox often caused unburnt or partially ignited pieces of bagasse to be pulled through the boiler tubes and ejected out the funnel, necessitating spark arresters be fitted. Even then, there was still a great risk of lineside fires. But most damningly of all was simply the fact that, compared to wood and coal, the gas wasn't very effective as fuel. Both coal and wood burned longer and hotter, and wood especially was still a relatively cheap and plentiful resource. Bagasse was a good way to start an engine's fire or keep it warm while idle to save fuel, but as the sole source of energy, it simply couldn't compete. Stationary boilers could burn it fine as they didn't have tenders limiting the amount of fuel they had access to, but on a locomotive with limited room, it just makes more sense to use a fuel that takes up less space and puts out more heat. 
As such, most sugarcane mills still operated coal, wood, and oil-fired engines, despite having plentiful access to a free source of fuel. Not to say that bagasse burning engines were rare or useless, as plenty of them were built for work around the world, and as far as I'm aware, worked about as well as most other steam locomotives of their size. But when mills had the option to fire engines that didn't need to constantly restock their fuel supply or risk starting line-side fires, they took it. Their affordability to run, however, has helped many of them live a long working life, with some bagasse locomotives still working well until the early 2000s. On top of that, it's found that burning bagasse is carbon neutral or better, meaning that despite the reputation steam locomotives have for belching black smoke, burning bagasse is much better for the environment than most other fuel alternatives. While not exactly the most revolutionary way to fuel a steam locomotive, nor the most efficient, the fact that for years sugarcane mills have been able to run their own railways with not only their own unique source of fuel, but one that's actually good for the environment, is certainly an achievement. So next time you see a steam locomotive, just remember that, as much as they like burning wood or coal, a sweet treat can be just as effective when getting them going. Subscribe for more.